Hey, we're soon gonna have a theme song, which we'll explain soon, but it's gonna be a little more, a little more exciting than just a uh, image. Um, <laughs> hi guys, welcome to Starts in the House. I'm, I'm, so, con- I'm, this, I'm so self-conscious. Are they giggling? Um, well, no, if people saying, are you really surprised? So now it's, we're going the opposite way, Seth. Literally when it comes on, no energy at all. I just realized <laughs> no, that's we what we're We said, we're <laughs> on. Now it's just- too many people commented on it, so now I'm self-aware, and I guess you are too. That we're talking like, about it. Nothing. Why okay. are you wearing a beautiful V-neck from Barbara's? Um, <laughs> you know when Barbara had the sailor look? <laughs> Don't. Um, anyway, um, so starts in the house. Fundraiser for the Actors Fund. We're here at 2 and 8 p.m. every single day. Although tomorrow night, right. we're not doing our 8 p.m. show, not because we're lazy asses, but because Jesse Tyler Ferguson and friends, can't remember the rest of the cast, is doing <laughs> Lips Together, Teeth Apart, for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. And we're like, we don't want to have a crazy competition. It's so it's stupid. Like, be kind so of we're throwing everything. So tomorrow night, 8 p.m., you've got to watch and that. And the link will be here, actually, on startsinthehouse.com yeah. or go to Broadway Cares and their website. And I'm sure they are doing it on many other channels. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be star-set. And it's Ter- you know, Ter- Terrence McNally just sadly passed away. So it's an honor of him and it's his amazing play. So that's going to be tomorrow night at 8. But we right. are here tomorrow afternoon. We'll discuss it later. Anyway, that's right. The Actors Fund, Miss Nomer. Actors Fund is for everyone. Actors, singers, dancers, on stage, behind the scenes, all across America from the smallest theater. As long as you're a professional in show business, no matter what you do, publicist, box office, whatever you do, you can get help from the Actors Fund. Go to actorsfund.org to get the help. That's but right. donate to starsinthehouse.com to give the help. The Actors Fund is, do- how much per day did Joe Biden and Constance say they're actually- $250,000 per day, day is going out to direct financial assistance to professionals in the performing arts across the country in need of like the most basics for food, medical, rent, utilities, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so so keep donating. We're loving all the donations. Oh, actually, let me put up a little banner. Yeah. Um, but we also, have, don't forget, we have an auction at Stars in the House, which is amazing. But um, the banner is, wait, there it is, donate to I think that, oh. All right, there we go. All right, so Seth, we got some great letters. Um, so I'm gonna read the donations. No, you're gonna do that, you're gonna do that afterward. Okay. Um, so we get great letters, you, you write to, just basically go to starsinthehouse.com and you can write us. We get, and we have a whole team helping us answer the letters. So this is really, it's short and sweet, but it's exactly what we've been talking about, Seth. Because small theaters are really struggling. I was talking to, you know, Hunter Foster and Jen Cody, everyone's trying to keep their theater going. Lauren Kennedy, everybody needs help in these small theaters, Go. Um, this is not a small theater. <laughs> well, but you <laughs> it's know, a like, major regional, but you know what? It's a nonprofit theater and they, they need help. Anyway, this is from Richard and he said, we are 40 plus year subscribers to the Mark Pay Perform in LA. Next week's production of the, An- the Antipodes. It's not a musical. I never heard of it, but it exactly. was some play next week. And it's been canceled. And we donated the ticket prices back to the Center Theater Group. So instead, exactly of, asking, say. instead of asking for a refund, just say literally keep the ticket money and that'll go to keeping the theater going. So if you can afford it, just say keep the money. Don't give me a refund. Now, this letter is We're even, obsessed with this. Is even further away, Seth, than LA. You have to go all the way to the Philippines. Wow. And this gentleman, Emil Mendoza, has been watching us apparently from the beginning, even before Leia Salonga. Um, she, you know, she broadcast from Manila. That's right. Um, anyway, I'll just read it to you, and then uh, you got something else going on here. Um, Hi, Seth and James. I'm writing from the Philippines, and I just want to share that because of Stars in the House, me and my friends have taken your suggestion to do our own fundraiser for the performing arts community displaced by the global COVID-19 crisis. So far, we have done two episodes with cast members of shows canceled due to coronavirus. The first was with Next to Normal, and tonight was the cast of these two other plays, Lungs and Every Brilliant Thing, and next Sunday... We'll be with the cast of Anna and the Tropics. By Nilo Cruz, which I saw with Priscilla Lopez and Daphne Ruben Vega on Broadway. They're using StreamYard. People keep asking what we're using. Right, right. StreamYard, that's why I put that up. And um, he just says, it's a great feeling to be able to help raise funds for our brothers and sisters in the entertainment industry. Thank you for all the love you put out in the world, Seth and James. Very sweet. And so, so we tracked it down. We tracked it down. <laughs> And we actually found, it's so cool. It's like- And it is what we've been telling everyone to do. Yeah, we keep saying, doing it, you know, I just got a letter from Michael Unger, who is in, I guess, Milwaukee, is that where he is? Yeah. People are doing it in, do it for your theater. Use StreamYard. So anyway, we found this. It's it's, What we keep saying is like, you know when you watch Amazing Race, and you're like, oh my God, the Australian version of Amazing Race. (laughs) This is like the Philippines version of Stars in the House. Watch this clip, we love it. Uh, Palabas tayo means, uh, let's put on a show, or we are the show. Yeah. Um, so this is Palabas Tayo after party. You may be asking why after party, right? Well, first of all, I want to do a shout out to Seth, uh, Seth Nabulol, Seth Rudetsky and his husband, James, because, um, when the quarantine started, um, I was watching a lot of their 
program, a fundraiser called Stars in the House. And basically there, they're also raising funds for the Actors Fund. They were telling other people, watching them from other countries, you know what, you guys can also do fundraisers in your, in your countries for your communities. So I got inspired by that. And so I started talking to actors uh, to, to Open House, basically to talk and say, hey, I want to do this. I want to help out. And thankfully, Open House said yes. So what is After Party? It's an online chikahan with their favorite artists. Um, basically, we talk about backstories. We have lighthearted. It's basically it starts in the house. Yes. And so Open House, so Open House is like the Actors Fund. But in the Philippines. So I just love, so guys, yeah, keep, it was really inspiring. do it all over the place. Don't do it at 8 p.m. or 2 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> no competition, please. But do it any other time during the day. That we support. If you do it at our time, we will literally get our lawyers after you. <laughs> Cease and desist. I, I got this, never heard. I got this email this morning from Miss Richfield. For those of you who go to Provincetown or see Miss Richfield and Miss Richfield, it's a great idea. Miss Richfield, 1981. Yeah. Hilarious. Right. And 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 Russ is doing the one who created uh, Miss Richfield created this online bingo, which since we're not on tomorrow night, we can do before seeing the play or figure it out. Do simul simultaneously doing both. But um, he literally said, I was like, so excited. why like, are you doing it? I'm like, we've got to promote online bingo. It's at eight o'clock. <laughs> Guess what, Mr. Richfield? I will see you in yeah. court. We're at eight o'clock. It's like, we don't own this time slot. Oh, I think we do. Okay, <laughs> anyway, listen, I want to read donations. Here's the deal, by the way. We're working on another giant project, which we've been putting off since this began. And I finally got kind of an email today from the person that's also in charge of it. He's like, have you guys done anything to help? Anyway, well, we, have a giant, we can't really announce yeah, it. It's actually, what I can do is I can say it's a, a little clue or a hint that it actually was an idea of Keala Settle. Yeah. That was the weekend that we came up with the idea for Stars in the House. So and, both began the same time. Yeah. We put up. So anyway, James is doing a Zoom conference. So he's basically- I'm actually late. For, yeah. You but, know what, why don't you get, you want to go out? I'm, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to, I title of the show is, is your thing. Okay, so, so you I'm going to go to Zoom. my call and then we'll have more details in the next week. Okay, bye James. Well, yeah, you're going to like this project. And let me, let me read the donations from this afternoon. We just get just smatterings of donations. Text it to us. These are not the only donations. But the next batch I get, I'm going to have the title of show people read. Kenneth from Missouri gave 100 bucks. Garrett from California gave 100 bucks. Wow, a lot of hundreds in a row. Guy from Pennsylvania, 100 bucks. Sam from New York, 100 bucks. Julie from Illinois, 50 bucks. Jennifer from Arizona. I like Arizona. I go to Scottsdale all the time. 25 bucks. Joshua from Florida. 25 bucks. Stay home, please. Don't go to church. Joshua, wait, Jewish name. Don't go to shul. Um, Joshua from Florida gave 25 bucks. Diane from New York gave 250 bucks. Thank you. I cannot believe people are giving money in this time of complete economic uncertainty. We so appreciate it. If you don't know, by the way, since we began less than a few weeks ago, we've raised $149,000 just from these donations. So keep it up, clowns. Okay, here we go. I'm so excited. Wait, what? Where? I don't know what the... Yes, she's going to be here. For she was in the original title of show when it was at Nymph. I don't know what this question means, why it's there. I got to go. All right, please welcome four people I'm so obsessed with. I love the show so much. I have a thousand stories about how many times I've seen it. They're also brilliant. It's the original cast of title of show. I bring you... Heidi Blickenstaff. Hi, Heidi. Hello. Hi, everybody. I bring you Hunter Bell. The delay is amazing and weird. Okay, everybody's weird so far. I bring you Susan Blackwell. Be normal. I'm normal. Thank God. And I finally bring you Jeff Bowen couldn't come, but Wilford Brimley uh, came instead. Please welcome <laughs> the bearded Jeff Bowen. Okay, so I warned everybody that you can't interrupt because the sound gets sucked out. So everyone's in a panic about it. I just basically say you have to nod politely and then inhale as if you're about to speak. Um, so guys, for people who do not know what title of the show is, because I have a thousand questions that viewers sent in. People who don't know what title of the show is, can you just, why don't you just tell the story of how the whole thing happened? Who's more erudite? Hunter, I can't tell if he's frozen or if he's just thinking. I think he's frozen. Manny Gonzalez was frozen during In the Heights but her voice kept happening. I could think she was being demure. She was like this the whole show. She's literally frozen. So Hunter is quizzical. Hunter is thinking. Anyway, Jeff Bowen, what's the title of the show for people that are watching, like what the F was the title of the show? Uh, it was a, a experiment in uh, uh, 
Take care. Susan, make what title is for? <laughs> I so is an original musical written by Jeff Bowen and Hunter Bell. Uh, they were both in it. Heidi Blickenstaff and I were both in it as well. And it chronicles its own creation from the inception of the idea all the way to its opening soon. night on Broadway. 100%. I also want to say, yeah. James, was, James was saying, like, the reason we're so obsessed with it is that it's so, it's sort of what we do. Like, it's just like, let's put on a show. And then, like, you guys like, literally made it happen. So Jeff, you you wrote it with Hunter to get into this festival called the New York Musical Theater Festival, which is now defunct, devastatingly enough. But you basically kept pushing it till it got to Broadway, right? Yeah, yeah. We just kept uh, we just kept working. We had nothing better to do except to bother each other and keep making up nonsense. And um, just we believed somewhere deep in our souls that this story about people creating musical theater needed to be told on Broadway. And for whatever reason, we just didn't give up. We just kept going and going and going until lo and behold, we found ourselves at the Lyceum. So let me ask you something. I haven't really interviewed all of you. I interviewed you maybe a year after Broadway, but I haven't interviewed you in the, in the years since. So as far as I know, this show is like done like regionally and in high schools. Like what's the story with all the different productions around the world? And how did you cut all of Susan Blackwell's unbelievable cursing, which is rampant, throughout the show, go. A bias to answering that? Um, how, you mean, how is it, is it insane? Is it being done, is it being done everywhere? And yeah. is, are, is the curses, are the curses cut? Yeah, uh, yeah, the curses are cut. There's a high school version, which is sort of clean. There's a clean version, and then there's the F-bomb version. And uh, it gets done quite a bit. And um, I, I, I would love going to see it. It's so fun. They play Heidi, Jeff, Susan, and Hunter, and Larry. And uh, or marry sometimes, depending on what gender you want to be for the accompanist. And it is um, it's really fun and very rewarding. The most rewarding thing I'll say is that when we talk to people afterwards and they have the same sort of uh, bonding, artistic uh, growth in friendship that we had in real life. I mean, it was great to get to do a show with your best friends, but our our friendship grew our appreciation for the theater and one another grew too. And when that happens to other people, that's the best. I don't care if they sing the songs and act the show, great. But if they have the same sort of personal experience that we had, thumbs up. So what's cute is you guys really are friends in real life. Heidi, is that true? Or is this all just like on screen and then off screen, peace out? We don't speak, we don't speak anymore. Um, no, we are we are truly friends. We were friends and we are still friends in real life. It, um, I think it was uh, kind of a, it, it was what was super special about the show is that it was chronicling an authentic friendship um, that was the glue that kept, kept the musical we were writing, it kept that going. Um, and our friendship actually was more important keeping that intact than whatever we ended up making. Because I think Hunter and Jeff originally, when they were thinking about what do we want to write, they wanted to write what made them laugh. And there is a real um, alchemy there that existed and still does exist. And I don't know, I feel very lucky to be a part of this weird little group of misfit toys for sure. I wanna play um, the last song you wrote in the show or the last song of the show is Nine People's Favorite Things. It sounds like, first of all, say what that expression is. And it sounds like one of those expressions like we've known for a thousand years, but you you created it, right? Like where did it come from? Um, I think it was, it was an amalgam of like several quotes we had seen artistically. Um, I can't even remember the origin of it. Um, I think, it, and it's also sort of matched up with sort of off the cuff, like, or not off, we are sort of like, oh my God, it would be so great to be uh, interesting to one nerd than 10,000 cool people. Like we just would say those sort of things in our lives and it somehow made sense to us. And so like, let's make a song about it. Why, Susan, what's your thought? I, I, I have a vague recollection that there was an interview with Ricky Gervais where he said something yeah. about, I'd rather be, um, it was one of those things, like I'd rather be 100, it was like, I'd rather be one person's absolute, like the thing that they love rather than like 1,000 people's 
whatever it was. It, so I, I have a vague recollection of that as well. So the lyric is I'd rather yeah. be nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. That's a great line. So this is a great clip. Everyone sounds amazing in it. And you can just hear a little of the amazing song. Hit it. So good. What was that from? The clip? Oh, oh, the con that was from, I believe that was from the, the concert that we did at 54 Below, which was the music of Jeff Bowen. I love it. At your age, it's so, um, so haughty. Okay, um, so I need to discuss something crazy that happened the night that I saw it. I'd love you guys to retell this craziness. So I, I saw this 10 times total from like its inception to the end. I went with my sister, Nancy, who was obsessed. And this is the night right before um, Heidi and Susan sang secondary characters. And Jeff, you basically almost died. And I had to watch the entire number knowing that you were maybe dead, but I didn't want to say anything to my sister Nancy because she's so good at pen and she'd freak out. So I had to have a quick <laughs> smile on my face the whole time, wondering whether or not you were dead. So can you please just retell for my audience, everybody's own perspective, go. Um, yeah, we were, there's right before secondary characters, it's the first time Jeff and Hunter exit the stage. And um, we sort of get excited and we're like, oh, you got to come uh, wish us luck. We're going to go out into the field and, and, and try to make things work. And as we were exiting the stage, Hunter exits first. And I used to sort of side skip just off the stage. And right as I got to the last like side gallop, I tripped my ankle turn and I just went boom just right on my side with my feet out on the stage a la uh, The Witchy Witch of the East. Yeah, it was. It looked like that. And, and slowly they dragged me off the stage while those two prepped for secondary characters. And you guys saw all of this, right? You watched me be right. dragged into the wings. Right. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I sat in the wings with a lot of mm -hmm. adrenaline, like, am I, what's happening to me? Did I just break my ankle? And and you guys can tell what was happening on the stage while I was backstage. No, for Please. Susan, what was happening on stage while he was almost dead? Heidi, do you remember? Well, I I remember being. I didn't exactly know what had happened. All I heard was a thud, and Jeff Bowen was down, and half of his body was out of the door and the rest of him was still on stage. And then he slowly started to snake out the door. But I remember thinking, what happened? I, like I had no idea it was an ankle injury. I thought it was a massive heart attack. I thought I had no idea what it was. And Susan and I were left to deal with that, you know, emergency, not knowing what had happened to our best friend who was being bagged off stage as if you were unconscious. I don't know. It was insanity. And when you came back on stage, Susan and I had no idea. And I remember, Jeff, when you and Hunter came back stage, I attacked you. Like I hugged you, I tackled you because I was just happy you were alive. Because I honestly thought, I was like, is Benjamin going to come? Our standby, is he coming back out? Like what's going to happen? And Susan and I just had to go be on Broadway while our friend apparently... I was resurrected. Well, what's crazy is that Jeff had to come back on stage because you're ripping and literally surprise you. So you don't even know if he was actually the one surprising you. Jeff, so what happened? And so I just, I had twisted my ankle and I came off the stage and I was in, you know, I had three minutes to decide whether or not I was going to stay in the show. And I, I do, the story also is that Benjamin House, who's the standby for Jeff Nunter, was in his dressing room and very quietly over the uh, the sound system at the backstage at the Lyceum, Martha Donaldson, our production stage manager, was going, Benjamin House to the stage, Benjamin House. And he was like in the middle of a little nap and got up and was like, what is happening? And they quickly threw him in Jeff's costume and brought him down to the stage. And he was sort of ready to go very quickly because it's you know very complicated to get in that outfit. And um, 
<laughs> and I sort of sucked it up. I was like, I can do it. I can do it. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And I always say in retrospect, I wish I would have let him go on because I was in my head the rest of the show. I was just like, I, did I break my ankle? Did I break my ankle? Did I break my ankle? Instead of actually singing the lyrics and, and telling the story that we wrote. Well, I saw the night. It was still actually amazing. My sister loved it. By the way, we were there the very first preview on um, Broadway, me and James. I've never seen anybody greasier, but I wanted to show you. We came on the set, and there, there we both are. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we can't just go like that. I mean, it takes one second. Couldn't do it. Didn't have the time. Okay, so look, we have some questions from viewers, which is weird because. They were actually sent from you guys. <clears throat> Kicking it off with a question for Jeff. Jeff, what is your beard's name? Signed, James Lipton's lawyers will be in touch. <laughs> What's that, Mike? Uh, my beard's name is Susan. Like, just like Hunter's beard's name is Susan. And name is not Susan. Okay. I have a second there. Well, Hunter was so waiting to get back on. Hunter, it's horrible Wi Fi. If you guys are watching, you don't realize that. He's in um, Pennsylvania and he's literally in a cabin. And I basically said he has like a rotary phone he's trying to use. It's like literally, literally dialing up. It's not the Wi Fi. He only speaks to us through an intermediary now. So <laughs> let's Everything get that story trending. Okay, for the group, this is the kind of question I love. For the group, what is the lowest brow TV show you've watched? Heidi, starting with you, dear. Um, I, I have to say, I mean, I've, I've, I've checked in a lot with Dr. Pimple Popper. I'm into that. Um, no, yes, yes. No. You either, you're either, you're either in or you're out. out. I'll be your name. It's my jam. Um, I, I checked in with the Tiger King. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Nicholas and uh, Nicholas and I just started a new documentary on Netflix called Wild Wild Country. Anybody see that? What's that? I feel like it's about a cult in Oregon. I highly recommend it. Sorry, that that's not lowbrow though. But Dr. Yeah. Dr. Pimple Pop, that you know, it's a it's an acquired taste. Susan, can I have your answer, please? A full on binge of Tiger King, top to bottom. That's not lowbrow. Up and down. It's not really lowbrow. I like to think of those people as Jeff Bowen's people. Um, <laughs> But it, that it's not really lowbrow, but there is like a, a you feel like you want to shower afterwards. Okay, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Jeff Bowen. Yeah, lowbrow is tough for me. They're gonna laugh because it does. I mean, I it's just for me. It's like PBS kids, kids baking championship. Is that even lowbrow? Or is that like really sophisticated? It's neither. I don't watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of movies. Um, so I don't really have a lot of lowbrow stuff. I'm trying to think of like something lowbrow I'm doing. You know what? I'm catching up on some comic books. Like it's, that's not lowbrow. That's higher. Okay, so don't worry about that. But instead, Jeff, I, would, I wouldn't mind you telling the story since I have you on the phone. Speaking of TV, of why your TV was um, must up when you were a kid. Oh, uh, because I had a crush on uh, Captain James T. Kirk. Uh, 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 of Star Trek, and so I would kiss the screen. Also, a little bit that was, um, it's a shame Hunter's not on because I know Hunter's in a low brow. He told me this, told us this today. He's in a, he found a channel that did like a marathon of the love boat, and he's been watching the love boat. Uh, yeah, I think it's called, it's called Decades. That's decades. what Hunter is watching. Who has At ever any rate, heard of yeah. the so starring on The Love Boat was uh, Ted McKinley, who played the ship's photographer, and I also had a big crush on him, and I would kiss the screen sometimes when I was little. If did, did anyone ever say, like, why is there a lipstick print on the TV screen? My mom, who's watching this right now, by the way, in Annapolis. Hi, Mom. Hi, Jeannie Bowen. Hi, Jeannie Bowen. Hunter would win this category, by the way, because oh. I think Hunter, I, you know, I think he will spend a little time with Very Cavallari. Hunter and I will go back and forth and like talk about the MTV re Road Rules Real World Challenge. We used to watch that. We'll we'll check in with that stuff. Okay, Susan Blackwell, I'm gonna I'm gonna text you the first batch of donations that we got, by the way, oh. because everyone's gonna get to read some donations tonight. Okay, so hold on, message, message. 
So if you donate, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, read by some stars of Title O Show. We have to read you. The library is open. There's a <laughs> there's a big one in there too. Okay, so hold on. I just texted it to you. I got and it. I'm sending you another batch, Heidi. May I proceed? Susan Blackwell, please. Batch number one, coming at you. Joshua from Arizona, 125 smackers. Joshua, that is no joke. Great work. Susan from Ohio, I beg your pardon? Uh, $25, we'll take it. That $25 is gonna get put to good use. Thank you, other Susan from Ohio. Martin from New York, oh my God. $1,030, such a specific amount, Martin from New York, but I'm not mad at it. And Meredith from California coming in with $25. These are fantastic numbers. I don't, I'm not good at math, but I think that's over $1,000. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second because someone's Wi-Fi is better suddenly. Please welcome, Love Boat. Hunter, are you frozen or are you just weird? <laughs> I, I'm frozen and weird, but let it go. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm a country south. I've got country, country Wi-Fi, um, but uh, I'm a little bit country, and you guys are a little bit okay. roll. You, you missed a very important question. What is the lowest brow TV show you, you've ever watched, and is it true you're watching The Love Boat on decades? Can you repeat the question, please, and use it as a sentence? Hunter, it was a sentence. What is the lowest brow TV show you've ever watched? And is it true you're watching a Love Boat Marathon on Decades, an obscure TV channel? Yes, it is. And uh, in this time that scares me and worries me, uh, I, I turned to 80s TV. I found this cable channel, Decades. It's showing the Love Boat. Uh, it is true. And the episode I enjoyed last night uh, was a fashion show in Acapulco with Bob Mackie. Shout out Share Show and uh, Morgan Brittany were the names I recall, but I love them yes. both. And then uh, it's a marathon. They're just showing them all. Then there was a, a special Australian uh, where Lauren Tews, who played Vicky Stubin, uh, not yeah. Vicky Stubin, that was Jill Whelan, of course. Uh, um, Lauren Tews played Julie McCoy. Boy. Yeah. Good use of time. I'm glad I, I got back on to talk about Love Boat. It's no, I don't, well, listen, here's the deal. If on I, part of my house, off the house, um, I love you all, and I'm proud also, of you. Also, Hunter became an ordained minister, so congratulations to him on his ordination. For what reason? To to marry people? Look at his look at his outfit. Oh. Okay, hold on. There's a very vital question. God, thank God, this is so important. Did anyone else see Seth play Jeff at George G. Playhouse? Yes. That was a very nerve wracking show to perform in front of you guys. Namaste. I'll bet that was so weird. It was actually amazing because I I was obsessed with the show. I wanted to play any of the four of you and I got to do it. And then to do it in front of you, it was actually it was actually great. Of course I was nervous, but it was amazing. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. Hunter just stormed off. Um, by the way, you know, there's a fifth person in title of show, Mary, right? Or yeah. um we also call him Larry. Yeah, Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi, everybody. So, so Larry was the piano player, arranger, music director, all the above. Larry, um, I brought you as a surprise guest. Do you have any story you'd like to share about these four clowns, one of which is missing? Well, I actually have a moment. It's kind of more about me, if that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, the... Um, the first chord of uh, Nine People's Favorite Thing is an F major with an added two, right? And it's rolled, right? Well, one night on Broadway, I don't know what happened, but it became an F minor chord. With <laughs> and I don't think they ever recovered. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> we laughed through the whole rest of it. <laughs> I don't know. I just got, I just kind of lost track of things. But you know, 
It changed up the temperature. I dug it. I kind of dug it. I took the ride. Yeah, really. The title of the show was haunted. <laughs> it's all of a sudden very, very serious. But um, I have a, show, I have a, some information about Hunter. Oh, as good. A music, as a music director, when you're working on an original show with Hunter as an actor, when you're developing the songs and the arrangements, and he's playing, he's so free, he can sing anything. And let me tell you, Pavarotti has nothing on him. I've heard notes come out of him, high B flats, as free as you possibly can do. And I'm like, fantastic. And we write it down, and the next day I bring in music, and he looks at it, and he's like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I, I, I've never met anybody like him that can do things so freely if he doesn't know what he's doing. He's like um, the WB frog. Right, it is like a WB frog. <laughs> um, well, he's not here to defend himself. Hunter, yeah, Hunter is gone. He's not here to defend himself. Um, okay, so hold on. I'm gonna bring you guys all back. You know, we have a chief medical correspondent every show. We have entertainment plus Dr. John LaPook from CBS, because we all want medical news. I'm bringing on Dr. John LaPook, so everybody peace out for just a moment. Peace out, La. Peace out, Hyde. Peace out, Jeffy. Peace out, Wonder Twins, Susan Blacks. And then here is Dr. John LaPook. Hey, Seth, how are you? Hi, Dr. LaPook. I keep, there's part of me that keeps thinking you're saying the cheap medical correspondent. <laughs> no, you're a very generous soul. <laughs> I just have bad diction. Okay, so what's, what's the update? I know we're all supposed to wear masks basically to protect other people so we don't spray on other people. What is happening? Everyone's getting obsessed with, now that they've had COVID-19, like Gavin Creel, they all want to get their antibodies. What's the update on the antibodies? Yeah, the antibody test uh, is starting to come up now. I mean, there are various places. We're waiting for actually FDA approval in one medical center in New York City. That's going to be able to tell us whether we've been uh, infected in the past, not whether we have it now, but whether we have antibodies to it. And if we have antibodies to it, our blood may be able to be given to somebody else uh, and that could help them. Um, they're actually uh, doing trials of that right now. I covered that story and we're waiting for those people to see if they recover. It was first used, I discovered, in 1891, as you probably know, to treat diphtheria, which used to be a highly, uh, a really uh, dangerous, uh, it still is dangerous, but there was this antitoxin and it actually was the first time that serum from somebody else's blood was given to somebody uh, in a concentrated way and it and then it led to its use in the 1918 pandemic, as you well remember. Uh, and there was some anecdotal um, suggestion that it, it helped there. What's going on in New York City now is um, is not good. I mean, good, a little bit good news. There were 36 fewer deaths today than yesterday in New York, whether that's a blip or whether it's real, still around 600. Um, and we're, we're expecting that this coming week uh, is going to be very bad, that uh, hopefully we're peaking out. But we still are. We still are having a lot of really sick patients, um, hoping to get enough protective equipment. So, for everybody around the country and around the world, don't let your foot off the gas. You've got to social distance. It's really important. I know there are still some arguments about it, some discussion about it. Just because you're not seeing it in your neighborhood doesn't mean it's not there. Um, so, just assume it's there. So, I yet again got another video like. Make sure you gargle because it lives in your throat. And if you gargle, can you just, is any of that true? No. So there, there, is, there is an email that's been going around that's like 63% garbage. Um, it was initially supposedly coming from, from a Stanford professor and then from the uh, someplace in England. It's the same stuff. It talks about gargling and inhaling. You, you, you're sure you don't have pneumonia if you can inhale and don't, and don't have any, I mean, it, it's really nonsense. So all that stuff about gargling, no. I mean, this is a respiratory virus. You get it in your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Um, and it's too bad that right now we're seeing a lot of misinformation. Uh, so folks, cdc.gov, it's really good information on coronavirus. And what about the whole scary four tigers now have it at the Bronx Zoo? Are people supposed to be scared that their tiger is going to give it to them? Because I have three tigers in the backyard and it's freaking me out. Go. But and that tiger. Um, tiger. So this is a little surprising. Um, 
there was a case of a couple of dogs in Hong Kong that they found the virus in them, but maybe we, we, it was uh, the owners had active COVID and we you know, dogs are always licking everywhere. So the fact that they had the virus didn't mean they were infected. This, the, uh, the tiger, Nadia, I believe is the name of the tiger. I was just reading. Um, they just tested her, but there are a couple of other, uh, t other tigers or other animals that also seem to have a cough. Um, so it seems to have gone from, uh, humans because one of the, um, caretakers ha ha did not have symptoms, but, tested positive for it. So it seems to have gone from human to the tiger. Um, stay tuned. Um, they, the CDC does recommend that you wash your hands, you know, when you're dealing with pets. There's no evidence that the pets can give it to humans. But in this case, it seems like the human gave it to the tiger. So um, another little surprising turn. It's ever evolving. All right. Basically, in summation, cdc.gov for all information. Please don't mail videos from a trusted source. All that, it's making my head come off. It's, it just drives me crazy. Um, all right, Dr. LaPoo, give me back to say goodbye at the end of the show, please. I hope. See you later. All right. Bye, Dr. La L. Bye, P. Okay. I'm bringing back the clowns. One day, one day, Hunter will appear again. Okay. So, hi, guys. Hi. hi. I have another, I wanted to bring on a student choreographer. Jeff, you know Michael, Michael Baris, Baresi. So he came over to your house today, which is so nice, social distancing, but he came up with a mask and gloves. Um, why don't you introduce Michael to everybody? Uh, please welcome the director choreographer of a uh, title show, Michael Bares. Hi everybody. I live here, Seth. I'm trying to respect your privacy. Oh, you I think people know now. Pretty right. sure people know. Please explain yeah. the beard I got. What's happening? <laughs> it's just the '70s. The porn star go. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> it looks great, actually. Susan, you have any comments? Um, I don't recognize you. I don't know you. I don't trust you with those mustaches and beards. Now well, the attorney now will be in touch. Time to say we literally haven't heard a word that Susan has said this entire time because, for whatever reason, her mic is on mute and we can't fix it. Yeah, you so know. What? Hope... Don't worry about it. It's just been sass. Okay, here's a question for the panel. Like I said, viewers sent this in, even though for some reason it's from Susan Blackwell's email address. Here's a question for the panel. Up to this point in the pandemic. All of you have maintained your sense of smell. What's the weirdest, best, or grossest thing you've smelled during your quarantine from Dayton, Ohio? Susan, perhaps you're familiar with that question since, yeah. I feel like that's a really beautifully structured, well-written question. Yeah. And a real hard-hitting piece of journalism. Um, should I go ahead and answer it? I mean, yeah, I think so. it is a great question. Um, it's a tie for me. Two of the worst things I've smelled, and I, I want to say how I am just filled with gratitude that even though I was exposed, I never developed symptoms, and I'm so thankful because these are such scary times. That being said, I maintained my sense of smell, and two of the weirdest, hardest things I've smelled, the most challenging smells are one, because we can't take our dogs to the groomer, we had to um, express them ourselves. And that smelled like sardines and pennies mixed together in that sat in the sun for a while. And then um, also like in the middle of our quarantine, our kitchen sink stopped draining and we had to kind of like snake it out ourselves. And that was about a year's worth of sink soup that was backed up in there. And that also did not smell great. Anyone else? Well, hold on, Susan Blackwell. I just want to say that your description of expressing was very clear. And I remember in the show, you just, you actually described your own armpits in Tyler's show, which was a combination of what? It was a combination of hot dog water and... I don't know. I've done a lot of meth in the last 10 years. Anybody? It was, I, all I remember was the hot dog water. I don't remember what else. Uh, <laughs> ha hamster hutch? I don't remember. Jeff, do you remember what the line was? 
Kitty what? litter box. Kitty litter box. Kitty litter box. Oh, Bag of raccoons. I, I don't remember. One time it was hamster cage. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Stephanie Kingsbury. Kitty litter and hot dog water. Bravo. Okay, so Jeff and Hunter, you need to answer the question. It's from a viewer. What's been the weirdest, bestest, grossest thing you've smelled over this quarantine? One, just one, three. Current, just currently today, um, last night we had uh, Baltimore style peel and eat shrimp, and um, that was great. But I also was going to make some very garlicky kale before, but then I I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do the garlic. So I had chopped up the garlic and I threw it in the garbage. And then also when we finished the shrimp, we threw all the shrimp tails and heads and peels and skin into the bag, but we have not taken the garbage out yet. And earlier today, when I opened to throw a tissue away, I got fresh garlic and dead shellfish. So that smells good. Michael? He's right. Just FYI. Can you top me? I absolutely Do I have to top it because it was pretty bad. I, I smelled it too. You have a comment on screen, Michael Barres. That's for you. Oh. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad, Sean Ryan. I love Darling Grenadine too. Just saying. How you doing? Big... You are. Big... Big... We have a weekly Zoom meeting with my entire cast and my stage management crew. So you still do love it. Hey, look at that. You were upstaging all the answers with your dog. Would you like to now answer? Right. Attention is on you. Well, I I brought her into it because it's her. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure why her farts are particularly not on point or on point, depending on how you'd like to smell that. Um, but maybe they're like panicky farts. I'm not exactly sure, but she's been sent, spending a lot of time like connected to me and she will just fart and it ranges in, you know, sweet potatoes and earthworms and it just smells really really bad Mixed with the, option, the option for all of you was also what is the best smell but all of you opted i noticed okay i just want to <laughs> just want to clarify so for us i want to give you a shout out for not only the direction but everything about the title of the show is so clean and precise and yet not the type of broadway i hate where I feel when there's a pudding rehearsal, everyone is very, you are on three and a half. So it's very precise and yet it's very free. So I just thought I'd show you guys all the ending choreography for Vampire and it's just so deliciously free. Let's take a gander. Very clean. <laughs> Isn't it though? Jeff, why though the, why was um, popping and locking your option? <laughs> why was it, how, why was it not? Why weren't we all doing it? Well, I think Michael probably said free form. Most people chose something normal. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, because it's in my blood, Seth. It's in my blood. Were you a, were you a, a popper and locker back in the eighties? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is this yes ending? No, Keep going. Absolutely not. No, I was. You totally know that. In his, in his, in his bedroom. Those two know this. That I, yeah, I could pop and lock. With the best of them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. The rest of them. Whether that's in my head or whether it's true, it doesn't matter. It's true for He's me. He's gonna hold his head up high, Seth. That's a musical theater lyric. Ah, yes, I know. By the way. I've, I've known Michael the longest out of any of you. Michael and I did Forever Play back in 1992. 91. Oh my God. So I've known this, by the way, you know, you still look the same. So, okay, here, I have a question from Librettist HB at Bucks County Playhouse. For Jeff, did you have any productions canceled? <laughs> I I have a show, yes, that I've been working on with Hunter Bell uh, and our collaborator 
um, Ann McNamee, a new musical called Other World that was premiering at Bucks County, is premiering at Bucks County Playhouse. We got all the way up to the first preview. We had to refund the tickets that night to the first preview. Uh, but the cast got to do it. And because it, the whole thing is tech and it's very, very complicated, Bucks County is just like, you know what? We're just going to bring the ghost light out, reset to the top of act one and get this thing ready to go whenever we open this building back up again. So we're on pause and it's, 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 we're very fortunate to be on pause. And this is you and Hunter wrote it. Yes. With, Aunt, with our collaborator, Ann McNamee. And what's it about? Give me details. Uh, in, in a nutshell, it's about um, some people who get sucked into a video game and all hell breaks loose. And so you guys, I love it. You know, Jack- That's easier to explain than title show. What'd you say? What's that? That's easier to explain than yeah, title of show. It is. <laughs> By the way, I need to send you a script, Jeff. Jack Plotnick, my writing partner at The Disaster With, when he was in, uh, when he was like 14, he wrote a kind of a thriller but it was called about a boy who gets obsessed with video games. And it was called Another Carter, please. Because he becomes so obsessed that it ends with him. Anyway, I don't even that. Okay, <clears throat> I have a question. <clears throat> this is from Jeff Bowen from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, best friends. Do you like Jeff's facial hair? Before you answer, remember that he is needy and fragile. I plead the fifth. Suze. My computer froze. <laughs> That's weird because I... <laughs> I told both of those boys many, many days, possibly even weeks ago. I wasn't sure what was going on with the facial hair, but if they need to act out in these times of quarantine, then you do what you need to do. You do every, every every woman I know right now has added like 10 inches of length to their hair in the Marco Polo oh. chats. It's just like everyone is like way down. And so I think the boys are well, like, well, this is our version of Roots. Yeah, this is this. It'll all go away when everything opens back up that day. A uh, message has just come in. A message has just come in. I've got a message from Larry who wants to shout out that title of show was supposed to open at his alma mater, Wichita State University. It has been postponed, but he wanted to shout out to them. And I also have these kind words from Hunter Bell. Hunter is losing the Wi-Fi war, but sends love to everyone watching, especially family and all the beautiful tossers. Stay home, stay safe, wash your hands, kill vampire germs, take care of each other, love each other. X's and O's, hunty. Just wanted to shout that out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, thank you, Hunter Bell. I have more questions. <clears throat> This is from Spark Fan Bell in Creativeville, New Mexico. I heart the Spark File podcast. Are you making more during this time? Well, what a great question. The Spark File is a creativity podcast I host with Laura Camion, and you know we are hashtag innovating and we have figured out how we can podcast virtually. And yeah, because we feel like it's such a breath of fresh air and inspiration during these um, challenging times. And so we feel it is our duty to the public to uh, make more. So hells yes. Check it out. The Spark File, wherever you get your podcasts. Yes. By the way, I'm supposed to be a guest and I keep putting it off. I'm so sorry about that. But I'm going to do it. We could do it now virtually. That's right. I want to talk about your amazing title of show show. There's one thing I was obsessed with where um, – where the puppet was on, it was a Christmas show. Discuss how that happened. Remember where like, where Cheyenne came and he wasn't supposed to be a guest, but Hunter invited him because he was obsessed with him. Discuss that plot, Jeff. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's true for a lot of the plots of the show. It was just like, anytime Hunter could get someone cute on the show, we'd be like, let's call him up and see if we, they'll come do it. Um, I don't remember specifically. I'd remember... I do um, remember, I, I will say, I do remember yeah, that Mindy the puppet. Being there and being game to eat brownies yeah. and, and Mindy yelling at him because she had issues with him being there. But Susan, who did you want to have? Because you asked, does that not mean I'm going to get to see? And Jeff, you have an amazing line. Oh, oh uh, what about the bones of Hervé Villachez? 
Yeah. Your, Jeff, your no is amazing. Susan, no. 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 Okay, to here, this, watch. Still to this, there are often times to this day where Susan will be in a conversation and either Hunter or Heidi or someone will just go, Susan, no. <laughs> watch, I'm obsessed. What are you doing here? Hunter emailed me and asked me to be on the show. I brought brownies. Hunter, we agreed that we weren't going to put any star cameos in this episode. Does this mean I don't get to meet the tiny bones Susan, of Harry no. Delicious? What? You want me to leave? Um, I think so. Really? Yeah! Get out of here, shiny gypsy! Wow. <laughs> okay. To this day, I'm so obsessed with that, and I know one other person who's just as obsessed as I am. Please welcome. Still hurts. <laughs> Still hurts. <laughs> yes. yes. He's got a beer too. Hi, Shai. Hi, Susan. I'm loving the silver hair. Girl, I hope you are because it is coming in hot. And I think by the time this pandemic has passed, I'm just going to have one long gray Renfair braid. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Cheyenne Jackson. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi, hi. Oh, look at everybody. Hi. How are Where you? Where are you? Cheyenne? I'm in my kids' room. I'm in my uh, kids' room. This is uh, so you can see. How are you and how is your family? Um, We are good. We're good. I mean, it's been, it's a day by day thing. I mean, the first like maybe four days, Jason was having a pretty rough time and I was like the cheerleader and just trying to, you know, help him get perspective. And, and then we switched roles <laughs> and then I was really uh, depressed and I've just been, I'm on an all carb diet and it's going great. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, what are you doing to stay healthy and kind of creative or physically healthy? I mean, I right before this all happened, I got a Peloton. Thank God. So I have. Yeah, a me too. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Do you, do you like Cody? James loves Cody. You know what? It's too much of a therapy session. I just like I get it. I know I can go my own speed, and it's all good. And I'm gonna do me boo. I'm just like, it, but yes, I I like Jess a lot, which I love. He's he's kind of a you love it, Heidi. I love Jess King, but yeah. my best workouts always are Emma Lovewell. I always beat my records with Emma Lovewell. She will kick your ass. I uh, love her. That's good. She's good. She's good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm I trying, love. Her. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm just you know like everybody. I'm trying to do something. Today's this is the first time I put on a shirt all day. I mean, I've been in like. Just pants? Yeah, I mean, I have gross depression sweats on like everybody else. It's like when I see people like, I'm learning a language. I'm, you know, <laughs> gross. I'm not. I would <laughs> say one of the most helpful things that anyone has said to me was the wise, wise Laura Camion, who just reminded me that every single person on the planet right now is essentially running a marathon. And on any given day, at any given moment, we are all at different points in that. So sometimes you're like, I caught my third wind. And sometimes it's like, I am on the struggle bus right now. And just remembering that everybody is at a different point in their race, everybody's at a different part of the pendulum swing and just having grace with yourself. And the yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be the, the cheerleader for my, you know, cause I have three, three and a half year old twins. So we are, you know, uh, homeschooling and just try, we turned our little guest house into a little school. And it's just, <gasps> I already had such a respect for teachers. My sister's a teacher, her husband's a teacher, but good Lord, when you have to think of stuff to do and you have to, but I'm doing it. I'm actually like, I get them ready. I put like, I do their hair. I put backpacks on. I try to make it a thing so they don't just like, wear their pajamas all day long like me. Yeah. The kids, they have to have a schedule. It's really yeah. going to help them have some kind of a schedule. Yes. Oh, man. But you know, I, adults do too. I mean, I found that when I'm schedule free, I am, I'm useless. Like I, I, and I get depressed really easily. I was doing, I was singing songs for BCEFA, like, and I lost my steam. I just like, 
hit a wall. And I know a lot of people did, you know, that first week of the quarantine, everybody was like, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to get an A plus at quarantine. Yeah. And then I hit a wall. It's just, it, there are a lot of ups and downs because the truth is, is it's really, you know, it's, it's serious and it can be scary sometimes. What is it like? What's the sense in New York right now when you walk around? Is it just so, is it fearful? Are people really staying apart from each other? In, L in LA, everybody's so spread out. So I'm keep... up in Harlem. Oh, you're in Harlem? Okay. I'm in Harlem. Jeff's in, in Brooklyn. Okay. Seth, you're, are, are, where are you in New York City? We're upstate now. We have, we're not in the Upper West, oh. we're upstate. So we're really isolated. Got it. Got it. Well, in New York City, in Harlem anyway, um, people are very, you know, it does feel kind of remote and people are not on the streets. I'm sure that around Midtown, it's there are more people there, but where I am, um, it's pretty desolate. There are lines to get into grocery stores and um, always seem to get into the liquor store okay though. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a weird time for sure. I was in Trader Joe's last week and you know, got my stuff I'm all geared up. I have my list and I just go in and like get everything done. I got, I filled my cart. I was all ready. I turned around, well, not everything in my cart, but I tried to get everything I could. I turned around to get some bananas. Somebody stole my cart. <gasps> Somebody took my cart. And, and I, I, I was like, is this really happening? And I looked around and there was no one around. I thought, am I going crazy? And I went to all the way through the other side of the store. And yes, I had taken it, taken all my stuff out. And it was just like, you know. You didn't hear anyone in the grocery store just yell at you, get out of here, Johnny Jackson, with a little puppet. It was Mindy. Just with a car, with a little red arm. Little red arm. It was Mindy. It's hey, just so cool. Title of the show, people, look at this. This was supposed to be our opening weekend of title of show as well in Traverse City, Michigan, but we've been postponed. We love you. I We're hope you so get a for the show. So Cheyenne, people are donating to the Actors Fund during this. I just texted you some names. Can you read them out? We're doing Jerry Lewis style telethon where you get to read the names of people who donated. Oh, sorry. You, you did? I don't see anything. Wait. While you wait for that to oh. come up, Cheyenne, I want to read this that came in on the public chat. Somebody named Emma Lorick. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Emma. Emma Lorick said, Susan Blackwell, can you please get Elizabeth Stanley on the Spark file? I will donate so much money to the Actors Fund. Yes, 100%. She is on our guest list. We will get her on the Spark file. Emma, how much are you going to donate? She get sure. that I'm looking for your comments right now, Emma. Because maybe Susan will give you a shout out on the Spark file if you donate to the Actors Fund. So I'm reading the comments right now. 100%. Susan, did you see, uh, have you guys seen Jagged Little Pill? Have I seen Jagged Little Pill? Yeah. I yeah. haven't. Oh. What Elizabeth is doing on that stage is so fucking great. I believe it. So when you know, when you've known someone for a long time and you know what they're capable of and you finally get to watch everyone else figure out what they're capable of, it is so satisfying. He goes from Amen like that. his wife to like crack whore in front of our eyes. I'm just so loved. Okay, this came through now. Uh, Randy from Nevada, $1,000, amazing. Randy. Uh, hi, Randy. Hi, Randy, we know Randy. Thank you, Randy. Oh. Uh, Gad from Missouri, 25 bucks. Thank Josh you. Gad. Gabrielle from Pennsylvania, $50. Yes. Thank you, Gabrielle. Lydia ah. from New York City, $100. Wait, who was that in New York City? Lydia. Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. Tyler. Lydia. From California, $50. Uh, Thomas from California, $100. Hi, Thomas. And then Lou from New Jersey, four hundred and fifteen dollars. Get it, Lou? Yes, you must, these are high donations. They now, are. Shane Jackson, my friend Paul Vote is married to my friend Dimitri, and he had a really a totally opposite experience. He just said, "I was at a trade show in LA. It was a miracle. <laughs> I thought I was everything." Dimitri, that's amazing. Um, 
Okay, so here's the hopper part. I, I literally, I'm forcing Heidi to sing. I sent her a piano track, and she's going to recreate one of the songs from the title of the show for all the title of the show fans out there. Um, this is a song that Jeff Bowen wrote, dedicated to Andrew McCardle. And Heidi, you were Annie as a child, were you not? I was, I was. I, uh, at Good Company Players in Fresno, California. That's my dream role. Um, all right, so let's set this one up. This is the character of Heidi, played by Heidi. And <laughs> thank you. She's basically talking about when you're a kid and theater is magic and the older you get, the more it becomes about business and people you know and not getting roles and trying to get back to the magic of when everything about theater was magical. It's a brilliant song. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I didn't say you do find it. I said you're trying to get back to it, but now I just did spoil it. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get there. That's what she said. Is this good? Dancing in the backyard, cool eight mustache and butterfly wings, hearing Andrea McCardle sing from the high five bed. I've been waiting my whole life to find a way back to there. I aimed for the sky, a nine-year-old can see so far. I'll conquer the world and be a star. I'll do it all by the time I'm ten. I would know that confidence. I knew a way back to that. So I bailed on my hometown and became a college theater dork. I was eastbound and down, moving to New York. So I crammed my life in a U-Haul to find my part of it all. But the money Mundane sets in, we play by the rules and plow through the days. The years take us miles away from the time we wonder when we find a way back to that. And when you least expect, opportunity walks through the door. You suddenly connect to the thing that you forgot that you've been looking for. And there you are, right in the middle of what you love, with the craziest of company. You're having a kick-ass time, and being who you wanted to be in this world. You're that little girl with her wings unfurled, flying again. Dancing, just gonna keep going. I found a way back to that. Full out, people. All right, the placement was amazing. A neighbor is going to call the cops. Gives a shit. Guy, right, that was so great. Heidi, amazing. The song is stunning. Michael, I love the stash. All right. Uh, hold on, you're all muted. Hold on, I have to unmute, unmute, unmute. Wait, let me unmute. Okay, so everyone has to come back because we have to do a whole show on um, um, members only. I'm obsessed with, uh, with your next show. We didn't even get to talk about that at all. So you're coming back for that. We need to actually have Hunter here to defend himself. Cheyenne, you're coming back and you're gonna right. see him next time. My right. favorite, um, signs still delivered. Oh God, okay. I'm obsessed with it. Right. Um, guys, thank you for donating. So people that are watching, tomorrow at 2 p.m., oh my God, we have Casey Levy um, from Hair, obsessed with her and from Frozen, and we have Colin Donnell from My Dreams. Work, what? And then, uh, <laughs> immature. And then this week we have a reunion of shows like Young Sheldon and Desperate Housewives. They're all gonna be here. Wow. Um, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tyler Shore. I love you so much. Thank you, Shane, for the surprise. Thank you, Larry. Peace out. John the Pook.
Dr. John LaPook, thank you so much for being here as usual. Everybody see you tomorrow and broadcast, click.